Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming. We're at Unchurch tonight. We're just going to go right into um, the prayer and then we're going to uh, go into the threshing floor. But we're going to do a threshing floor um, in a whole different way because God started showing me um, some different aspects of threshing floor that I've taught before. But it's also... Um, we are deviating from the Saturday teach my people how to war, but I still believe that this will um, line up with the word of God because we have to be like the sons of Issachar and one of our prophetic um, intercessors, she's the one um, that brought it to my attention that we need to teach on this threshing floor. And as I kept praying about it, 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 it lines up with what we're doing also on Tuesday night Bible study, which is the book of Revelation. And the next, um, in the next um, series that we're going into, the next chapter on the book of Revelations from Revelations to four, to the end of Revelations about tribulation. And tribulation is, <laughs> tribulation is on us even though if we don't believe it's the last tribulation we all are going through different trials and seasons that we're in that we need to be able to hear clearly from the from God and so I found that um I found that it, it was interesting that as we are going through these different studies that we're doing, teaching my people how to war and revelation, that God is giving each and every one of us revelatory gifts. He's given each and every one of us signs and miracles and wonders. He's given us dreams. He's given us opportunity to be in spaces that we would um, otherwise not be in. So I'm going to open us up in prayer. And as um, we um, continue, if you have questions and stuff, please raise your hand in the thing. So if you need to say something, because Sometimes we can go deeper when someone has a question that has not been asked. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and um, pray and then we're going to get started. Father, I just thank you, Father. I anoint this time for you, Lord. Have your way. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of truth. Bring to us to the truth of God's word, truth of what he would have us to know about the threshing floor in this time and season. I thank you, Father God, that you are the head and not the tail, that you are the head and you have also made us the head and we are not the tail. Father God, help us not to live below our means anymore from this day forward. Father God, I ask that the manifestation glory of the sons of God be in each and every person that listens to this message. I I ask, Father God, that each and every one of us, as we, Father God, identify the things that we need to take to the threshing floor for you, um, Father God, to be complete in you will be revealed in this time and this season. I bind the hand of the enemy and that he will have no victory here. Father God, I thank you, Father God, that you have identified that he only belongs under our foot. Tread upon us. Tread, we tread upon him, Lord. I thank you, Father God, as you continue to reveal your word, your word in this dark, that these light bearers will go forth like never before. So I ask now, as I yield my, my, my whole being unto you, Father God, have your way. Do whatever you want in this Bible study. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Glory. So we're going to have a lot of scriptures. I'm going to slow down. I know everybody said I was going really fast last week, so I'm going to try to slow down because this is a very, very important um, a series. It's a very important um, topic, okay? So first, I think we need to define what the Russian floor is, because many people have different views, but all throughout the Bible, um, the threshing floor is a, uh, is a symbolic um, place, okay? It's a symbolic place, but it's also a, a um, historic place, right? Amen? So, um, of course, I have uh, some of our Bible study people on here, and they may weigh in at times, or they might just be praying for you all. So, um, so let's get started. Um, a threshing floor is a place where the wheat, not only the wheat, but wheat and grapes and different things that, that needed to have that separation, um, it was a place where they went um, um, to, to take the things out that were not edible, that were not pliable to our lives. And this is what the God has called us to in this time as we go to the threshing floor. I'm gonna be looking away a lot because I wanna make sure that we have the notes all the way that God would have me have because he's giving me a whole lot of notes. Um, so the definition I'm going to give you for the threshing floor is this. The threshing floor in scripture is a place of separation and revelation. A place where the harvest was prepared by separating the grain from the useless straw for the purpose of exposing and collecting the most valuable part of the crop. Today we're going to look to look at how God uses the idea of threshing floor, the chaff, right? And the winnowing fork to remind us of his judgment, redemption, and presence. So the outside shell of a grain would then need to be separated from the good part of the grain. And shaft means, um, give me a side note, shaft means 
um, rubbish. And you can find a, a reference to that in Psalms 1. Um, verse four, but I would say this week, read the whole um, Psalms one. So you get an, um, you'll get a contrast of how we as people of God are supposed to live. He goes back from the righteous to the wicked, the righteous and the wicked. So put that in your notes that you need to go to Psalms one this week. Other scripture reference that um, talk about the chaff um, in rubbish and the wickedness is Isaiah 17, 13, Isaiah 29 and five. Isaiah 40 and 23, Isaiah 41 and 2. I will have notes um, for you. So because of the times and um, throughout, throughout the whole Bible history and throughout the world, the threshing floor was a common terminology. So God used that. So when the people of God or when the prophets would say that there, there was a time of threshing or there was a time, um, there was a time that people needed to go up to the threshing floor, um, they knew already knew, knew what that, that purpose of it was for. But in the spiritual connotation, it, it was a whole nother meaning. And I'm going to hone in on David for a minute. No, I'm going to go ahead and explain some more of the threshing floor. Sorry because I want to make sure that you guys have a real, real um, understanding because it's going to be really important in the next um, couple of weeks, in the next couple of days, even after you get off of here, God's already, God's already been dealing with a lot of you to come out from among them, even uh, come out from among them that you have fellowship in the, in the houses of the Lord, because he says, I need to do a work and I cannot do it if you're in the midst of other people. It's your time of calling away. It's your time of, of coming. It's um, so... Um, threshing happens in the harvest cycle is a time of separation. Okay, I need you to make sure that you know that is a time of separation. It's not a time of punishment. It's a time for you to separate yourself from the things of the world and come unto your God. There's three main things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the time of separation. We're going to talk about the actual threshing, and then we're going to talk about the sifting or seeding. And um, I'm so excited because it's going to be my first time ever talking about the sitting and seed, um, seeding in this context. So um, as God, as um, they went out into the place, usually it was a high place, usually it was a circle, and it was away from other things and other people. So then that, that the process could be fully developed out of there. They, in that, they had different um, tools that they used. And one of the tools was the, um, the tremble board, the tri um, tribunal board. I'm sorry. And you can find um, in that um, John 16, and then tribunal means tribulation. So I thought that was God, God so wolves everything and every symbol together. So tri that tribunal board meant tribulation. So it was a taking away, taking away of things, right? Just at the um, time of separation. That board was used to separate the outer shell um, from the where the grain was or whatever material it was, right? And then he used the winnowing fork, and the winnowing fork was um, it was called a fan, right? And, we're, and that's gonna be so exciting when we get to that because I'm trying I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. The winnowing uh, winnowing fork was used to to um, after the um, tribunal was used, right? And after the the um, the separation, it would um, pick up what was on the ground. Right, it would pick up what's on the ground and it would push everything up in the air, and everything that flew away wasn't for us, it wasn't for them, it wasn't for their consumption. So that's what God is doing in our lives. He, you know, He's taking separating things, and then when He does that wind that comes, is separating the things in our lives. And then the last, the last tool um, um, that was used um, after the winning fork was um, they would use that fork again. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. The fork would be used again. And in that, it would take away everything that was, uh, how would I say, the residue, the rocks that was inside. So the main points that God um, told me on here, he says, is, is, is the time of rest for the bride. Clarity missing from your direction. Whew, God is shaking up everything. It's not the enemy, it's God. And God says, I'm cleansing you. He says, um, showing, showing you what needs to be removed out of your lives. He said, I'm showing you what needs to be ruled out. And it's a process that I'm coming to. And he says, yes, this was a, um, given to you by um, a prophetic unction that I gave to Brenda about talking about the threshing floor because he says she's starting to walk in her gifts of, um, 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 <laughs> as the sons of Issachar. And people of God, whomever hears this later, you need to study the times and seasons that God has called you that. But God's calling us to get each one of us into our own place, our own place of responsibility in him. Stop trying to be someone else that you're not. Be who God has called you to be. So he's going to bring you clarity and direction. God is shaking us. 
He's shaking the whole entire body of Christ. He, he is in the shaking of us, not of the world. Those are after effects, but he's after his children. He's after us that we may have a pure walk that we, so when we walk in before others, that they will see the love of Christ. They will see the power and anointing of Christ. They'll see the, the delivered body of Christ, right? No, no longer us um, being halfway in or halfway out or lukewarm. It is a time and season that we are to be his. And I know I'm going into the prophetic before you go through the rest of the season, so just stay with me. And if you have questions, type them in there and I will get to them, okay? But God, again, says showing you what needs to be removed and, and, and giving you the correct process. You've been trying to do it on your own in your own knowledge and strength. But God says when you come to the threshing floor, he says with fear and trembling will you find the answers and the, and the victories that you will need in this time and season. It's the process of refining um, people of God. Amen? 2 Samuel 24 and 18 and 25 is what I'm going to really rest on um, when we get, um, get to that part. But I just really want you guys to know that it is God that's doing the threshing. It is God that's called this threshing time and season. He may have used a, a, um, a prophetic voice to say it was time, but it is. And the last thing I thought was... Um, there are different types of threshing. The last thing I thought was very interesting, that trivium... Um, that they use to put the, um, the wheat in to take it away from the shaft. It's also called the tribulation. And in our Bible study in the next, um, from chapter um, four to 22, we will be talking about the time of, time of tribulation and how the church needs to be prepared. But you can't be prepared if you have not been cleansed. And we went to the first three books of um, Revelation and we talked about the different churches. So that was the time for God to show us um, wherever we stood in that process is where, um, is where um, we need to repent and be right so we can have those promises he's given us. And Lord, I have mercy on anyone that's in a little um, Leo Sodian um, state of frame mind in their walk with God. I ask that um, tonight that they are convicted and they change and they will neither be um, lukewarm in the, mouth, uh, in the mouth of God anymore and that their love will return for the Father, return to your first love. Um, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with the story of David and um, when he was um, when he went to inquire about a threshing floor, but that's where God showed me to go into the threshing floor. And before we switch and transition to that, does anyone have anything they want to add or say? Amen. Okay. Amen. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit more because he says I need to do a little bit more explaining for those that are, that are gonna come on later um, because many of you on here are, are, are teachers and leaders of yourself. But so just give me a little grace so I can um, pull this out a little bit more for some people. And we have to realize and we have to know when to pivot also. So I'm doing a lot of training and everything else too, but I, I want you to know when God says to do something, if you're in the middle of worship or if you're in the middle, or are you supposed to end work or are you in your program supposed to end worship and God wants you to continue to worship, you got to be mindful. You got to start learning to hear the will of the Lord and do the way he wants us to do it. Amen. Excuse me. Um, so once the harvest, I'm going back to the threshing floor. Does everyone remember the, um, the definition? I'm going to give it to you one more time. The threshing floor is in scripture is a place of separation and revelation. That's what it is. So once the harvest is gathered, and that's we are the harvest, and we have gone through different things, and God has given us words, he's given us revelations, he's given us conviction, he's um, shown us ourselves. I mean, really, when we're going through that so fast, I was like, okay, whew, I need a minute, you know. But um, once the harvest is gathered, the practice of threshing begins with intentional destruction. So get ready for destruction in your life and not a, a destruction. So I don't want you to be in fear, not a destruction that will, will um, cause you harm in the way that most people think about destruction. It's a destruction of the things that don't have any value as a, uh, as a child of God. It's a destruction of mindsets that have um, hindered you from going forth. It's a destruction of old belief systems and it's a destruction of the flesh. I can't leave that one out. It is going to, your flesh and your will and your desire is going to be crying out. But if you can press through that time, if you can, uh, if you can press through that time, then you, you will have a, a re great a rewards, great rewards. Amen. Amen. So let me see what else he wants me to say about that. Lord. 
That's a lot. I'm gonna send this picture. Something just happened. Did we go offline? Okay, sorry. Oh no, I'm sorry. I was trying to share the picture with you of the the tribunal board. I'm okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, not a problem. <laughs> I was like, I mean, that's the same board that I had. That's the same board I had um, picked out. So if we could put it in the um, in the comments, that would be great. Uh, that's, I was trying to do that, but it okay. ain't really like to share the whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. but that's that's the board, and we can go ahead and put that on the site too, so people can see what it looks like. I think that's a great idea. I have it over here. Um, so yeah, I, and I, I love that too, because God will have uh, the company or the people that you're in covenant with or tribe or whatever people want to call things these days, but those that you're called to and they're called to you, we will begin to think alike because God will give us the same vision. That what happens a lot of times that he will give us different types and portions of the vision, but it'll be the same vision that he's called for us to get a work done together. Amen. Amen. Lord, you're funny. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> so I want to tell you, he, I, you know, God always has me write all notes all over the place. He's like, where are your notes? And he normally doesn't let me use any notes. So there are different um, threshing floors throughout the Bible. There's a threshing floor of David. There's a threshing floor of um, Gideon. There's a threshing floor of Ruth. There's so many different threshing floors. Um, so when we go through this, go through this whole series, right, series or lesson tonight, um, be mindful that there's different reasons to go to the threshing floor, um, but they all are going to produce the fruit of God, a uh, deeper relationship with God and revelatory um, and things that will help you have clarity in your own life. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Amen. I'm sorry, the computer just shut down all by itself. But no weapon formed against us will prosper. Amen. And we learn that the enemy is not going to just sit back quietly while we learn the word of God. He doesn't mind us shouting all the time. He doesn't mind us gathering and praying and stuff. But when we start eating the meat of God and in the application in our lives, as he gets nervous, because then when you're praying, when you're worshiping, then you have power and authority, because now you have the faith to believe. You know, um, we have to have more of the word of God in us so that we can combat whatever comes against us. I'm trying to find the lady again. That's all right. That's why I got three different computers going on tonight. I came prepared. Okay. Amen. And that's another thing, too. God is preparing us in so many different ways and saying, look, there's no more excuses for us not to be prepared because he's already given us things. He's already told us how we want. And I'm still walking that out and I'm, I'm learning every week. But it's like we, we must have that kingdom, kingdom mindset that we have to go for. Um, um, we have to go into different realms and we have to prepare what we're doing because even God says the kingdom expression and everything, even in our business and in our lives and everything else, our family members should know that we saved. Not everybody that we come in contact on the outside world should know, but our family should know that we're saved. There's a difference because you can put a face, I don't even know what I'm saying this, but you can put a face on side, you can dress up and act like and put your Christian knees on, but how is it in your household? Can they testify and say that you are of God? That was, that's just a nugget. I don't know why I did that one, but that's okay. Let the church say amen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what God kept showing me over and over again, he says, I'm taking away the mixture, the mixture out. And this, and this, this new threshing floor season right now is going to take the mixture out. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, the, um, the, the mixture is um, taking out so then the purity of God can come in. And I just lost it when he told me that earlier. So the threshing process is a beautiful picture of worship and a metaphor for sanctification. The threshing floor as a, as a place of worship is where God's provision um, for us is on earth. Our responsibility is to cooperate with the process and in its turn, honor him with the bounty of what he's revealed to us. The progression of refinement is in our lives is going to be intense, children of God. We plant seeds and we tend crops and God gives us an increase. 
And so God says in this, in this threshing floor, what he's going to reveal in your relationships, your careers, your personal aspirations, and your faith. He says, and he's, uh, and he's going to take out and choke out these weeds of pride and tears of selfishness, self-doubt, and inadequacies in, in, in um, places where you are wounded in the loss of hope. That's what he's going to take out in this threshing season. God says, I want you to come with me with all, he says, I already know everything. Come with an honest uh, assessment of yourself. So when I start revealing, he says, yes, you may have weeping and tears, but he says th those tears of sadness are going to turn into tears of joy and tears of victory. God says, there's no more running from your calling. And in your, full, in your fullness in this time, in this threshing floor, you will come and be ordained into the places I have called for you for such a time as this. You will no longer be able to hide after this threshing floor experience. Are you ready to do what needs to be done? He says, I need, um, he says, in this, my tender mercies, I want to open your eyes to the hidden, he says, the hidden inside the pains that you have, the conflicts and your convictions. He says, I want to come and, and take the place of honor in your life. He says, I, I want nothing before me in this season. Glory. Those are the prophetic words. So let me go back over here. Lord Jesus, he's moving really fast. And I'm trying to um, keep y'all mindful that I'm going slower than normal. Amen. Okay. So now I'm going to go to 2 Samuel. 24. I have a question. For you. Yes, ma'am. What do you say to those who continue to go back to what's familiar with the assumption that God may be keep sending them back to the same place. Not that God is not sending them back to the same place, but sometimes we go back to the same places because it's familiar to us. Right. So familiarity will keep you from faith a lot of times. Familiarity keeps you from growing. And so if we look, we're going back, there may be, a, I'll answer in two parts. There may be a work that God's called you to, and those areas may stay familiar, but he would have you to a higher level on that. And so in, in um, all throughout the Bible, you always see God moving us from glory to glory. He keeps moving us from one place to the other. So if we go back, there should be a different assignment attached. If we're going back to familiar areas every time, then we're walking in that spirit of religion and we're walking in complacency and frankly, disobedience. Because if you're going back to the same places and nothing has changed, then you need to examine yourself. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. I, can I, I share something really quick? Yes. I, I just wanted to share this for just based on what you said. I was, I visited a, uh, my childhood church um, some months ago and it was the, the worship was so good. I was like, oh my God, I may be able to come back here. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I can come back here to visit. And then they started ministering and I got disappointed all over again. Aww. And I said, oh, goodness. Okay. Okay, God, what are you telling me? And what he was showing me in that moment, sometimes being in a familiar place with an excited moment will take us back to wanting to be in a place that was familiar to us. But he mm -hmm. was trying to show me like, no, not, not this one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, and sometimes you, you, you want to be around familiarity just because it's, it's comfortable to you. And especially when I, I find when God's ready to move you into another area, then you're all, even like, like if somebody's pregnant or you anticipating a great reward or something like that. And you're like, all oh, like, okay, when is it coming? When is it coming? And then a lot of times we will go back to our old things, our old ways, our old um, settings, because we were like, we're ready for the new, but it's not here yet. And we're in that, that waiting, that what do you call that? Like not a stall place, but like um, a holding pattern, right? Yes. We're like in a holding pattern and it's like, okay, maybe I can go back and try that. And maybe it's all right now, you know, in the holding pattern, but we have to learn how to wait on him. And that's when we stay in the place of worship, when we don't know nothing else, you worship him and he will bring revelation in that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And I want, I'm trying to teach it like I was feeling it because he was just, ooh, he was messing with me today. I was like, Lord. Um, so um, 
we're going to go to David and then we're going to go and talk about Jesus because, you know, he's the lover of our souls. You can't leave him out of nothing. Right. So we're going to go there. Um, Second Samuel. And I'm not lost. Second Samuel. Um, wait, first, everybody understand what the threshing floor is and the purpose. Yes. OK. Second Samuel 24, 18 and 25. And this even um, lines up with what you just said. And it says, it reads as, and Gad came that day to David and said unto him, let's get out of King James. I love King James. I study out of King James. But for um, this purpose, we're going to go ahead and move to New American Standard. So Gad came to David that day and said unto him, go up, erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arana, the Jezebelzite. Then David went up to accordance with the word of, um, word of Gad. Gad was a prophet, okay? Just as the Lord had commanded. And Azra looked down as, and saw that the king and his servants crossing over toward him. So I know, whatever that man's name is, Ardonai, went out and bowed his face to the ground before the king. Then it's spelled A R. U N A H. He said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? And David said to said to buy the threshing floor from you in order to build an altar to the Lord, right? He's building an altar unto the Lord. And so then um sorry, my phone was off, you guys. I'll buy the hand in right now. <laughs> Jesus. Okay to buy the threshing floor from the Lord in order to build an altar to the Lord so the plague may be withdrawn from the people. So you see the purpose of the threshing floor? You need to know what the purpose before you go into a threshing floor. Don't say, oh, I think it's time for a threshing floor experience. No. And this was divinely ordered by God, right? You don't just want to say, I'm going to go into a threshing floor, you know, for no reason. You, you need to be purposeful in what you're doing. You need to be led by the Lord, right? So, um, so the plague may be withdrawn from the people. Verse 22 then he said to David, let my Lord, the king, take an offer up with, with what is good in your sight. Look, here are oxen for the burnt offering, the threshing sleds and the yokes of the oxen for wood. Everything, O king, Anarai gives to you. And Anarai said to the king, may the Lord, your God, be favorable to you. However, the king said to Arana, no, but I will certainly buy it from you for a price. For I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. So no, children of God, this is going to cost you something. And we should realize that we cannot get things from God in new areas or asking him to take away things without us sacrificing unto him. Not like they did in the Old Testament. So let me clarify that. But bringing it to you, you can't have someone else's stuff. All that stuff that the guy was trying to be favorable and say, look, a king, because you're the king, I'm going to give it to you for free. But David understood <laughs> that it takes a sacrifice and it takes you giving up something that you desire to get what God would have you to go into the next season. You can stay as a Christian that, that is, um, um, has surety of their salvation and not have any fruit on this, uh, on this land. That's not going to be me. I'm not going to be one of those servants that stand before God. And I, the words I want to hear is well done, good and faithful servant. Right. So let me go back to the, um, to that verse. And in, um, verse 23, was it? No, 24. So, but however the king says, no, but certain, but I certainly buy it from you for a price. For I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. So David brought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. Then David built there an altar to the Lord, and he offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the Lord responded, responded to the prayer for the land, and the plague was withdrawn from Israel. Hear me, intercessors. Hear me, leaders all across this world. You want this plague to be gone? You need to go to the threshing floor and ask God what you need to do and what you need to offer up because it is by the, by the children of God that signs, miracles, and wonders, and this is going to be um, erased or eradicated or even if God does not take it completely off the world because if we're in a time in uh, revelations, then it will not be saved, but many times, many people can get saved. But if you're not right, you're not sure, if your flesh has not 
them crucified. If you you're offended by certain types of race or ethnicities or people with the lifestyles of whomever it is, then you are going to be bound in your witness unto the Lord. So when you go to the threshing floor, because He's going to send us all to the threshing floor. I'm there now, and it's been very revealing but it's like god is god is saying you said no matter the loss no matter the cost do you really mean it so when you go to that place for god to take the things out is there anything right now think in your mind in your heart and your spirit is there anything i'm not willing to give up to god is there anything? And if so, right now, I, I ask God that she gives you the conviction and love and compassion that you will freely give that up to him, that he may bring you to another place, to a perfection. Amen? Amen. Jesus. It's hot in here. Whew, okay. The question I keep hearing in my head, why does it have to be painful? Will is is it gonna be, always be painful? Will will it be painful? Is is surrendering our will and our way and our mindsets are always painful? Well, they are to me, right? The process of refinement is painful, but when you come out as pure gold, when you come out as a silver refiner, and that's a whole nother study, you come out more like him. And there's no other, there's no other way to put it. We are to become the sons of God. And so all those other things have to leave. Our, we have to submit all of our pride. We have to submit our fears. We have to submit our resentments. We have to, um, and for the, um, to the winning breast of the Holy Spirit. It is in the place of wholehearted surrender that God can and will and move powerfully to heal our hearts and take us to a new depths of relationship with him. Amen. Woo! I'm trying to figure out where the scripture is. Um, I'm going to give you an example, uh, and, and if I mess it up, somebody find the right scripture, because we are Bereans, and we will do things right, right? We will rightly divide the word of the Lord, so, um, and I don't have no problem with anybody correcting me, so that's not, that's not a problem. So what, 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 what comes to my mind is in, um, when John the Baptist was getting ready to baptize Jesus, right? Do you guys remember that? Yes. Anybody? Okay. So when John the Baptist um, went to um, um, baptize Jesus, he said a statement. So that's the statement I'm looking for, but I can continue to talk while I find that statement because that wasn't in my notes. Um, so I'm going to tell you a story. Somebody find the scripture so then we can give people the right scripture, okay? So when he came, John the Baptist was um, saying, repent, right, and be baptized by water. But when Jesus comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, right? So what the church has been at right now, they've been staying in the water. We even referenced that last night about going deeper, deeper in the water. And God says, no, you need to go in the fire. You, you, you no more um, baby bites. Come and consume the word of the Lord that you may be able to stand. You know, um, so when someone finds that, I greatly appreciate it. Is it John, uh, Matthew 3, 14? I have a need to be baptized of thee. Keep reading. No. Oh, hold on. Start at 11, maybe Erica, Matthew 3, 11. Okay. Mm -hmm. Teamwork, yay. If you have Viola, at Um. As they're, as they're finding that, um, keep on, keep on. Okay, Matthew 3 and 11, as for me, I- 11 and 12, please. Ha! Start at 12? No, Matthew 11 and 12, please. Oh, okay, okay. As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who's coming after me is mightier than I am, and I am not- fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winoning fork is in his hand and he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor and he will gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the shaft with the unquenchable fire. Amen. 
Amen. That just, you know, I just wanted to run across the room right there. Um, right there. So we bring in the old Mary in the Old Testament with the New Testament. And, and even in Revelation, they will talk about the threshing floor one more time, you know, in there. I mean, there's other places you find in between. But from marrying it from there to there is like, and that, that winnowing fork is the fan of God. You know, the wind of God. So we know what the wind of God is, right? So it's like God is telling us, look, to be mine, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to recreate you. And that's what it says by the renewing of your mind. So we we have to get out of just saying, okay, we're gonna jump and feel goosebumps and oh, I love this music in the church. But can you discern even in the midst of all that what was wrong? Like, we were in a service last night and it was a wonderful service, but then we also identified, we were also able to identify things that were out of order. So it is our job not to just go and feel goosebumps. It's not our job. It's, it's beyond our job. We, our job is to bring the kingdom of God, come out of religion, come out of church as normal. Um, there was this thing that came on, um, popped up today, and for my leaders, we're going to go into a deeper study later. Um, later. But it says, um, this t-shirt I seen, and I just like, okay, everybody's going to get this t-shirt. Normal in, um, isn't, isn't coming back. Jesus is. And that's what the mindset God wants us to be. It, normal is not coming back. Normal is not coming back because the kingdom of God is at hand and all those that learn to walk in the kingdom principles will rule and reign with him. And we will be, we will cast out devils. Not we will, we are casting out devils. We are laying hands on the sick. We are um, speaking the gospel to those that can't afford it. And we will not charge for the gospel because the gospel is free. God said he's bringing forth the people that are coming out the backside of the desert and they are ready to do the will of the Lord. And they need nothing for man because they are, their sufficiency is in Christ Jesus, amen, alone. Amen. Glory, Lord. I'm trying, Lord, I know. Okay. So all that that she just read, it, 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 if, if we look at that little piece, we can see how we are to conduct our lives. So many Christians are living in a place of just repentance, and they don't grow beyond that. And God is shaken. That's why we're being shaken out, shaken out of our sleep and slumber. We're being shaken to a place where we have to depend on him. And that even relationships have been um, um, severed because God says, you have placed those people as idols before me. So now, now that i got your attention, children of God. Will you come into the threshing floor? Will you let me that has begun the work in you complete it? that you may go and help save a lost and dying world. He says, people are crying out for those children of God, but they are going into and fro out of churches and being even more wounded than when they came in. He says, when will the righteous, uh, the righteous seed of uh, my seed stand up and proclaim with boldness and love and authority? When will you begin to cast out the devils? When will you do the works that I said that you would do? I said you would do greater works than I did. So the Lord is saying, are you ready to go to the threshing floor? He says, because in this threshing floor season, you will come out with a new vigor, vigor for me. And you will come out. And he says, you will not... You will not lack one good thing because even in the threshing floor, he says, just as when Ruth went to the threshing floor, he says, I came as a redeemer. He says, Boaz came as a, um, a type and shadow of me as a redeemer. In the book of Ruth, um, the redeemer's um, responsibility is to make sure he takes the legal response to make sure he takes care of the family. God says, I'm trying to take care of you as my family. But if you do not listen to me, you will still go through the cycles and seasons that you've been going through. You will still be in want. You will still have these urgencies and tendencies to go back to the places that you have been delivered from. He says, I have brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. But if you don't take hold of the light, you do not become light bearers. If you do not carry my light and my word and your, your, you will fall to and fail and this next season. The urgency, people of God, is a place of intimacy and prayer with the Lord. Hallelujah. Whew. And when Ruth was at the threshing floor, and this is the thing that I'm just all, I'm just, I'm, I'm not all over the place. I know what I'm doing, but the fire of the Lord is here because we're going to prophesy in a second. So when Ruth, when Ruth went there, when she went back to um, Bethel, she went with someone that's bitter. And the guy says, sometimes even the bitter ones have a word of knowledge for you, but you got to learn how to honor. But God, that's a, that's a side note. But Ruth is the eighth book, right? Ruth is the eighth book in the Bible. Ruth, that means new beginnings. 
right? Eight means new beginnings. So Ruth's tragedy, Ruth coming to the Lord, Ruth accepting God as her own God, leaving all her paganness and ways away. She came into the house of God in Bethel, which is the house of God, the bread, the bread of life where she had to eat the bread, right, to just survive. Ruth um, is um, a reference of the church today. And so no matter what we have come through, no matter what we've been through, if our love for God reigns supreme in our heart, he will bring us provision. And he has already given us the greatest redeemer of all things, all times, and that's Jesus. So the work is already finished, but now you have to walk it out because Ruth had to walk it out. She had to work in the fields. She had to glean from the fields. They weren't her fields. She had to take what was left over. But the spirit of God said to me, if you may have started with things that you had to borrow, things that you had to work and you had to get little bits and pieces of it. But he said, says in this season, when you come out of your threshing floor, he says you will own the territory just as Ruth did. She had to start with little grain, a little substance, but then she came out owning the territory. She redeemed other things that not only belonged to her husband, to generations past. And then she was in the bloodline of Christ Jesus himself. So she became, she, be, she left the old things. Amen, hear me? She left the old things. We have to put away those things. She left the old things for the new things. But in the midst, Christ has already completed the work for us. So when we grab a hold of that, then we can walk in a, in, in, in a, in a new authority. And I decree and declare, when you go into your threshing floor, don't run from the threshing floor because if not, you're going to have your Jonah experiences. You're going to be walking around in the wilderness. All these different things. All these things are going to come upon you. So God says that you... He, God says, if you if you run from this, because he says, the when my daughter called the um, call for the Thessalonians, she didn't know that she was walking in her Issachar anointing. And so therefore, God says, this is a call to the church. Come out, stop sleeping, stop being lazy. Don't be like the foolish brides, um, the bride, um, the virgins. He says, you are mine, but you are sleep and you are lazy. And he says, it's time for the church to be shaken, that they may get up their appointed times and seasons. God says, I'm bringing forth a, a new wind and a wave upon this land. And he says, there's going to be turmoil like never before, but those that know their God will do great and mighty exploits. Get ready to receive the harvest if you're living um, according to my will, and if you're not laid before me until you get it right. He says, do not go out tainted anymore. Even when I when I began this message, we were talking about the threshing floor, those three places, those three um, pieces of um three times um, um, the whole portion, um, the process of threshing, the times of separation. Many of you have to separate from your church. And this is a side note. God says, how dare you go go give your tithes and your seeds and offerings to someone that is dead. And then you want me to bless that. He says, you go to a place, you give your seed where you've been fed. He says, you give your seed where you are being flourished. He says, um, just because out of tradition, you're getting, you're going into places and giving your money places because I don't want to hurt my uncle or aunts or whoever grandma sue's feelings or whatever the case may be he says but then you live in defeat you keep having and then you go off and get a word or knowledge you're going to the, the midst of my my prophets and, and those that bless you and you get healed and then he says then you um then you go and don't want to give them anything but you go back there and you wonder why you keep having these cycles that keep going around that you get you get breakthrough and then you lose God says, "You don't pimp my pre, don't pimp my, um, pimp my prophets and priests in this season." He says, um, "Choose if you want to live a dead life or you want to live a life of victory." That was a that was a freebie. Um, that had nothing to do with my notes, but that was what the Spirit of the Lord said. So, a time of separation, a time no one else can go to the threshing floor for you. As much as we love you, we can't go with you. We can say, we're going to pray for you, but that's a personal experience that you and the Lord and you and the Lord alone can and go into. It's an intimate time. And then the threshing, as God is telling you, give up this, or you did this. Um, and each time the threshing floor gets a little bit more intense, I believe, but it is, it is, <laughs> but it is worth it. And then the sifting, the seeding part that I never um, um, talked about before. And, and when God was telling me, and I was talking to you guys earlier about when they throw up that fork, right? That fork was thrown up and then all the shaft is blown away. But when the, when, the, when the good parts of things that God can use or the good parts of the wheat is left there, the kernels and whatever, I don't know anything about that. The kernels and stuff like that, what they're doing, they're falling to the ground. So when they start putting, um, picking it all up, 
It's on the ground. So rocks and debris in there. So God says, now I'm, I'm even removing that. That's the residue. Those are the little foxes in your life. He says, I'm removing that in this, this season when you go to the threshing floor. He says, I'm removing those because you cannot have purity if there's rocks and pebbles. He says, I'm coming after even the smallest thing in your life. Don't think it, that, don't think it doesn't matter. If you have um, unresolved issues with anyone, those are little pebbles, okay? No one, none of us can see that you have them. You have biases against somebody or race or religion or um, sexuality, anything else. Guys, I'm coming after that. If you don't like a certain race, I'm coming after that. If you have a hatred for men or, or always speaking out of your mouth of men or dogs or whatever else, he's coming, I'm coming after that. You, you have anger towards your parents and how they raise you, I'm coming after that. He's, I'm coming, I'm coming for all of it. If he says you have, a, um, have problems with your own identity, I'm coming after that. God said, I'm coming for everything. And so in that, in that, um, in that, um, what do you call it? Purification of the grain and removing the resumes, the small rocks. I'm going to give you an example, right? And then we're going to go back, circle back to Ruth. And then we're going to end on that because that's the blessings. Amen. Uh, <laughs> what's the scripture? Luke, Luke 22. If somebody gets Luke 22, um, verse 31 and 32, I would greatly appreciate it because I need some water. Mm -hmm. And we're doing Bible study like we do Bible study because God said, don't clean it up for the people. Because I was like, Lord, I don't know if people are ready for the, he said, no, don't clean it up for them and give me the, give the word. He said, that's what's been going on so long in the church. We want to clean it up, sugarcoat. No, God says that you need to repent in this season from your dead works that you may, that you may um, grow. And that he says, because you are responsible for the spirit influence in your life. And whenever you get it, just somebody let me know. Um, you are responsible. People are watching your lives, oh Christian. Oh kingdom, oh kingdom people. They are watching you. So is your life reflecting God's um, love, his power, his, his mercy, in his love um, in the light that he's given to each one of us? He is the father of light. So that means we are light bearers too. Go ahead. Amen. You said Luke 22 and 32. Luke 22 verses 31 through 32. 31, 32. Simon, si starting at 31. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And you, when you once, when you, when, I'm sorry, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Sorry, I don't have my glasses with me. That's okay. <laughs> so basically he's saying it. Strengthen your brethren after you have been converted. And you're like, wait, wasn't he already saved? Wasn't he already walking with Christ? He's talking about the conversion of your soul. We are already sealed. The day that we confess Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and we believe and we turn from our ways, right? Because a lot of people are confessing Jesus, but they haven't turned from their ways. They still doing whatever they want to do. So that's what was going on. Peter, Peter had Peter had pride because he kept saying, oh, God, if no one else, if everyone else leaves you, I'm going to be here or I'm going to do this. Or Peter had, he had anger issues and cut off the ear. Peter had all these issues, but Peter was greatly loved and used by God, right? But he had these issues. But if he didn't go through what he went through, it's showing that he also had that fear and fear of man still in him. And he didn't go to a place where when Jesus prophesied to him that it was going to happen and the clock crowed, right? And it happened just like Jesus, he went to a place of repentance. And so then when he came later in his ministry when he seen other people behaving like he was he didn't condemn them but he showed them but he stood boldly in the truth but he didn't go back into that world of um um of world of being rash in his decisions and being angry and letting his emotions take over him amen so some of us have to go through that. And it's for the converting of our souls that we can continue to grow and be who we're supposed to be that we may be able to help others. And we're coming back. And some of you have been in kind of, God's son, being in the condemnation because you have faulted and fallen, or you have just told somebody flat off because, you know, I, I've done that lately and I had to repent. And so then, um, um, and I don't say that flippantly because it is God gets me. I mean, he'd be like getting me out. And sometimes I just be thinking stuff. He says, you know, that ain't right. And I'm like, okay. 
So it is when we're converted, when we know the word of God and when God has convicted us and God has um, given us mercy, even in us messing us up, messing up ourselves, that we can have compassion on others. So the enemy has tried to sift us, just like the just like the threshing materials they sifted. And but when G, when P, when it was done, Peter was purified. Peter Peter was sanctified. Peter was ready to go. Peter started talking to everybody everywhere. And the only other time you see Peter like reflecting a little bit is when he's talked about food. And some of us, you know, we can relate to that because some foods we don't want to give up. Um, and so when it came to food, but God gave him a, um, the vision on that from food to to people. So God's going to remove all the, um, the prejudice or biases or preconceived notions we have towards people so that we can minister and love, love on them the right way, right? Amen. Again, the Lord says the time of the rest of a bride. What the Redeemer is doing is calling us for a cleansing time, but he wants us not to rest like the world says, oh, go take a nap, go get on a vacation, but rest in him, rest in the completed work of Christ Jesus. Rest in that you know that you know that you belong to him and you will be with him forever and amen. But in this resting um, thing, these are the things that um, Naomi told Ruth to do. She, she told her to take a bath, be washed in the water of the, the word of the Lord. Be washed, be washed, okay? She told her to take a bath. She said, put on perfume. Put on the fragrance of the Lord. And the only way you can do that is by saying, being in his presence. Psalms 91, again, 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 again. In the secret place of the most high. And you will have the fragrance of the Lord anywhere you walk. People will see you and they don't even know why they love you. And they will give you favor or pay for something for you. Or just say, I don't know what it is about you because you have the fragrance of the Lord around you. So that's the perfume of the Lord. And the last one is to put on a new dress. No longer walk in um, grave clothes, no longer walk in gowns and in, in, um, garments of sorrow. Put on the, the, the royal priesthood and walk boldly in what God has given you. Amen. This is what God has called for us to do. And as we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, we will come out with boldness like the lion, boldness like the King Jesus, that we are to walk in all authority. I want you to remember Jesus is our God, our King, our Lord, our Savior, our healer, our um, refuge. He's our provider. He's our strength. He's our defender. He's our protector. He's my peace. He's my joy, my life, my all and everything. Is he yours, children of God? So as God brings you to a place of surrender, and as he calls you individually into your threshing places or times and seasons of fasting or consecration, know the whole purpose is to know him more deeply. And I end this in the most precious name. I know Jesus. Amen. Amen.